This is the version 24 release overview. Version 21 had a fair amount of heft and substance with topics like AKE and TLS SSL. Comparatively, 24 will be less of a challenge. The focus has been on improving accessibility, and our plan is to continue work on this important topic in future releases with expanded support for screen readers. We've also added Java support for operating system agents and taken steps to support universal language in order to handle operations with different character sets. To this end, we've designed a database upgrade tool to assist with this. This is the list of new developments of Substance in Atomic Automation version 24. There are other, more minor behind the scene evolutions, like performance improvements, and those are documented. Here we focus on the items that require user administrator awareness or demand some sort of behavioral change in everyday operation. We've made strides in improving AWI with a big push toward expanded accessibility. We've increased browser zoom support and started to introduce structural markup and other capabilities to support assistive technologies like screen readers. As part of the accessibility initiative, AWI now supports keyboard navigation in a number of areas where users are in a position to carry out their responsibilities using their keyboard and nothing else. Version 24 now supports universal language to better manage operations involving different character sets. A migration to version 24 requires upgrading all existing databases to Unicode and UTF-8. A database which has not been migrated cannot support 24. In that respect, Broadcom has designed a DB migration utility in the hope to make the process easier. We've added Java support to operating system agents, although 24.0 is confined to Windows and Linux. All other agents will be included in the near future. This doesn't mean we've eliminated conventional agent management methods. It's an added feature which carries new benefits for the user community. Java support is also extended to containerized agents. This is an important development which was initiated in version 21 and now has been expanded to support Java OS agents. We've added CRUD operations to the REST API. This means the API is no longer a simple passive tool for third-party platforms. Users can fully interact with the atomic data, list, edit, delete, and so forth. Finally, we need to mention a new development with the CyberArk password vault and how it relies on the REST API to support Atomic Automation Kubernetes Edition. Version 24 sees an extensive list of AWI improvements, especially in the field of accessibility for the visually impaired community. We offer better theming and icon management options in both on-premise and AAKE AWI, and workflow management has been improved with new columns and filters. More generally, AWI underwent a process of streamlining and simplification. This topic is fairly straightforward. We've deployed keyboard navigation in various areas in our efforts to promote better accessibility. It's very intuitive, relying mostly on tab space and enter and known shortcuts. Version 24 offers universal language support with Unicode and a UTF-8 database for better support of cross-character set operations. All databases updated to host a 24AE need to be set to UTF-8 encoding and upgraded to support Unicode. Other than PostgreSQL, this requirement was not present in previous versions, and so older databases may be using a different standards. Prior to upgrading Atomic Instances to 24, customers will need to migrate any database not using UTF-8 before deploying data structures and assets. Broadcom includes an automated UTF-8 migration tool with the version 24 install package. The tool comes in the form of a workflow to accommodate ILM. In version 24, operating system agents are installed, configured, started, and operated in the same manner as in previous versions. However, Broadcom has introduced a new capability, the Java OS Agents, which means handing over control of the OS agent to Java, which brings additional benefits. Again, this is not a substitution, but rather an additional capability to bring uniformity. It's fairly simple, but it does require knowledge of the syntax and some of the benefits that come with this new approach. Version 24 now includes the ability to deploy agents to containers. Containerized agents can be deployed in a standalone fashion. They don't require AAKE or containerized AE. Containerized agents can connect to an on-premise AE without any problems. They can also reside in a separate cluster, although such a setup would require an ingress or load balancer. The containerized agent package contains a Docker file to deploy the original image 
and some configuration will be required in the form of a config map, persistent volume claim, and deployment YAML file. Version 24 sees one major enhancement to the REST API, create, read, update, and delete operations. This means that we're now able to interact with atomic data and not simply use it as a data source for third-party applications. This targets both design data like objects and ops data like monitoring records and executions. We rely on traditional REST methods, post to create, get to display, patch to update, and so on. These methods match their CRUD counterparts. Users of the CyberArk password vault can now use those same capabilities with a Kubernetes edition. AE will authenticate with CyberArk using a TLS certificate, for which the public-private key is stored using a secret, labeled Mutual TLS Cert. This secret needs to be created in Kubernetes prior to installing Atomic Automation. We've provided the syntax, which can also be found in the version 24 documentation.